Hello, welcome to your video on factoring special cases. You will be able to factor perfect square trinomials and the difference of two squares. So the first question is how do I factor a perfect square? And before I show you exactly how to do it, I just want to um, remind you of a couple things. So um, a plus b squared is really a plus b times a plus b. Um, and that ends up being a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Uh, if you are subtracting, you will have a minus b squared, which is a minus b times a minus b, and you get a squared minus ab plus b squared. Um, so when you are looking for perfect squares, they will follow these rules. And something to look for is that the first and the last terms are perfect squares. So if you notice something like a 4 or a 9 or an 81, um, and then that the a term is being squared, um, that is an indicator that you do have a perfect square. Um, the other thing to look for is that the middle term, so the b term, um, which would be the a b part, uh, is twice the product of one factor from the first term and one factor from the last term. And that's why it says uh, 2 times a times b. Um, so that's another thing that you can keep in mind while you're doing these. Um, I will walk you through an example now. We have x squared minus 12x plus 36. Um, and I know that this is a perfect square because of that um, 36 there. I know that that is 6 squared. And I can take 6 and get a 12 out of it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is acknowledge that this is going to be x squared minus 2 times x times 6. And that's what I talked about is that the um, middle term is 2 times the um, factors of both the a and the c term. Um, and then the last part is that 6 squared piece. Um, and that will give me what I'm looking for, which tells me that x minus 6 squared is that fact answer. The second question is how do I factor the differences of two squares? Uh, and before I do any explaining, I just want to uh, remind you that a difference of two squares is when you have a plus b term and a minus b term. Um, and when that happens, you will get your answer to end up being a squared plus b squared because the middle terms um, cancel each other out. And so you can recognize this by when you see two perfect squares and there's um, no other terms involved. First example for you is x squared minus 9. Um, and I know that this is going to be an answer of x plus 3 and x minus 3 because it's the difference of two squares which gives me nothing in the middle, no b terms, um, and then the 3 squared is what gives me the 9. I'm going to do one more example for you. And this is 16x squared minus 81. Um, and you'll notice this is just a tad bit different because x is now has an a term. There's something else there. Um, and it's actually pretty easy. You're still going to use the rule for the differences of squares because there's no b terms here. Um, and all you have to think about is what number squared will give you your a term. And I know that 4 squared will. So I'm going to have 4x. And then the difference, so I need a plus and a minus, and then what will give me 81, and that would be 9 squared. So this is my answer. The last question is how do I factor out a common factor? Because sometimes you can, um, not always, but when you do, oops, um, what you want to do, here's your example. Um, so you might notice here that the coefficient um, is divisible by 6. So you're going to factor out that 6 right away. Once you take out that 6, I now have 4g squared minus 1. And with 1s, it can get a little tricky. You might be tempted to say that this is all you can do with it. Um, but 1 squared is, in fact, 1. And because there's no middle terms, that should give you an indicator. Um, and so you're going to factor this out. Um, the perfect square for 4 would be 2g. 
and 2g. And then the difference, so plus and minus, and then 1 squared is going to give you your 1. And you can't forget about that 6 there that you factored out in the beginning. So this then becomes your final answer. It is your turn to factor these three problems. Um, make sure you're showing all of your work. Double checking your work by solving and using the distributive um, or FOIL method um, or the box method even. Those are excellent ways to make sure that you're doing this right because it's very easy to make a silly mistake. Um, but do these and then check in with me for your answer. All right, you should see in red the answers. Um, if you didn't get these answers, please go back and try and find what happened. Um, and if you really can't figure it out, be sure to ask in class. That is the end. Thank you for watching. Um, please put your favorite number in that upper right corner on the front of your paper um, where that little complete stamp box is. Please put your favorite number there. Thanks. Have a great day.